The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson. My partner, Malik Hill. We're already at the end of August. It's that time. We're already at the end of August. It is that time. It is. But it's also that time I'm getting married this weekend. Yes. Um, Congratulations, sir. It's a special week. It's kind of crazy. It's a very special week. Um, Don't know how to feel about it, but um, I'm excited. And I'm also excited about football season. And today we're doing the Big Ten Preview. What we've been waiting for. Um, got a lot to talk about. So real quickly, we got to highlight the Hard Knocks episode three. What's your takeaways? What did you see? What'd you like? What don't you, what don't you like? Let me know. How you feeling after that? Well, I, I honestly, I didn't think about this while I was watching the episode, but I saw a tweet earlier today that said, it is very wild that the the veteran star, well, not star, but the veteran starter, former Super Bowl quarterback, is besides like a few highlights of throwing passes, he's barely in the show. Yeah, he's not a factor, which is very crazy. But he he also could have just been like, I've been here before. Mm-hmm. I don't need all this. I, I'm just yeah. Was he a part of the the last Jeff Hard Knocks Fis- with the Rams? last Jeff Fisher year? Okay. It was his rookie year, I believe. All right, yeah. So he's been in it already. Uh, they probably got a lot of highlight of him then. Um, he's a, if I was him, I'd, I probably would have been like, yeah, I've, I've done this before. Just. Right. We know he's the starter, so, yeah, maybe. I feel the same way, though, kind of about uh, DJ Chark because I kind of wanted to see, like, he's one of the big free agents that we got. Yeah. I, I would have liked him to be highlighted a little bit, too. Not but much Hawkinson, either. No, there's really not. Really, so they they go in on the young guys yeah. more than anything besides Jamal Williams. Right. Um, They definitely up their – New guys that they added this episode. They talked a lot about Khalil Pim- Pimpleton, uh, also Ezzy or Easy as they call him, uh, the Nigerian native, which I think is a cool story. Um, I don't know if he's going to make the team, but yeah, so seeing him in that practice footage in the linebacker room where he was just yeah barely giving it on that play that was yeah that was tough to watch yeah. But in in some of the highlights from the game, he looked like he got some good pushes at times, but. We'll have to wait and see. Khalil Pimpleton also, uh, it stinks because, like. I keep him as a returner because he is dangerous with the ball in his hands. We're both kind of in the same boat. Like, we like his talent. Um, I like, you know, he's a Muskegon guy, so it's kind of cool. S- still kind of a native. Um, and then, yeah, I would like him to be, to see him more on return. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying that he's on the chopping block right now. But if you look at it, him and Khalif Raymond. Uh, they're the same player. They're short. They're speedy. Raymond's 28. Pimpleton is even more elusive than Raymond. Right. Raymond's 28. Pimpleton's 23. I know Raymond's got like a higher repertoire because he had a lot of big plays last year. Not a ton of catches, but big moments last year. And I think that's what people will back on. But I, w- I think I would rather have the young guy than the guy that's aging. I agree. At this point. Um, knowing what we have, because neither of them are going to be, you know, like solidified starters or anything. They might be gadget guys almost. And yeah, I would like to see Pimpleton more in special teams rather than just receiving, I guess. Yeah. And you see how Cavante Turpin is starting to pop off for the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. He had a punt return and a kick return touchdown for them. I think Pimpleton has similar type of talent. Yeah. I don't think he's as fast as Cavante Turpin, but he has somewhat that level. And the one thing that I will say, this is the first episode where I know for sure they did not show everything at that joint practice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for people that missed it, because Pat McAfee was at that joint practice last week for his podcast, I think I mentioned it. The Lions' first unit on defense was getting trashed by Matt Ryan 
Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, Jonathan Taylor, they were destroying the Lions. There was a section where they had like 15 straight completions or something like that. So that's where I know because I watched it. They definitely sugarcoated that, and they made that joint practice look a lot better than it was. Now, the, the Lions did do good as it went on, and they showed that part, but that was much later in the day, and it was it took them a while to get used to it. But that's one thing that I did notice, and uh, something to not be too excited about, is that the Lions did get trashed at that joint practice at one point. They did... Uh, bolstered up towards the end, but it it was rough for a little bit. Um, other than that, episode was good as always. I'm, I think it's an easy, uh, thing right now to be a Malcolm Rodriguez fan, though. I believe in him and Derek Barnes. I, he, like Rodrigo, y- you're good in my book. He's he's fun to watch. He's not like. He's not overly arrogant, but he's like just enough. He's confident, yeah. He's just enough of that cockiness, but it's not arrogance, I guess. You can you can tell he's not he's loose at all times. Mm-hmm. He's not worried or nervous at any time when he's out there. Yeah. And favorite part of this episode, a lot less attention on Hutch. <laughs> I was getting I don't, I don't I was, have a problem with the attention on him. Yeah, I guess it's the fair. family <laughs> stuff is a, is a bit much, but Yeah. So, we'll see. David Blau kind of, you know, he he made amends a little bit. I still think Tim Boyle looks better. <laughs> just just in everything. Tim Boyle just looks more comfortable out there. Uh, Even though you still don't want Tim Boyle. No, I, I, I don't <laughs> yeah. want either one of those Out of guys. the two guys I don't want, right. this guy looks better. Exactly. So, there we go. There's your Hard Knocks review. What is it? How many more episodes? Just one? Or are there like a couple once a season? Honestly, I can't even remember. I can't remember if it's – I swear it said six somewhere, but I don't know for sure, which that would lead us into week two. So that doesn't really make sense. I don't know. It might just be one more episode, which is disappointing and sad. Just do it, do the lines the whole season. I don't care. Don't they have the Chargers for the end season? Hard knocks. I think it's the Chargers. That's Cardinals. It's the Card. Okay, it's the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, also a good option. Yeah, that'll be interesting. All right, we made it. It's the Big Ten. Yeah. Let's get to it. Where are you starting off? Where Where are we starting off? Listen. I'm gonna save the the super heavyweight the team I hate. I'm gonna save those guys. I'm gonna save them. Okay. Because another team won the conference and beat them last year. Oh boy. <laughs> We're starting with the Michigan Wolverines. Getting it out of the way. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Defending Big Big Ten champions for the first time in the Jim Harbaugh era. The first time since 2004. Man, that's it's just how does, it feel? how does it feel going into the season? As I'll I'll always have twenty twenty one. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I'll always have that season. It, I it, yeah, it's, it is really insane. I, until Michigan took that knee to beat Ohio State, I didn't react to any touchdown. I didn't get excited for any plays. Mm. I just sat there and just said, "Keep going." Like you're you're beating on them. You're tougher, and just keep going. And then when Cade McNamara took that knee in that game, I just – I was at a friend's house, and I just, like, got out of the chair, and I just fell on the ground. <laughs> and I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I was – it was it was a lot of emotion. They finally beat Ohio State. They finally get to the Big Ten championship game for the first time and just get Iowa out of there. Mm-hmm. They didn't have much of a chance. And we don't have to say much about the Georgia game because – Georgia had one of the greatest defenses of all time. Mm-hmm. They were just outmatched all over. So they got to the playoff for the first time. Big accomplishment, Big Ten champions. It's a new season. It is. Heisman finalist Aiden Hutchinson, who we just talked about, who's going to start for the Lions this year, he's gone. Yep. Second round pick David Ojabo, who was also an elite pass rusher, he's also gone. Mm-hmm. Daxon Hill. Daxton Hill gone. Who's also been doing pretty well. Your biggest impact guys and playmakers on defense are gone. And they have a lot of shuffling to do on the offense. They they bring back some experienced guys. They bring in some youth. But the real thing that's going to get the, keep this team going throughout the season is the offense. They return almost everything. 
I mean, Cade McNamara, who was the starter all season, even though J.J. McCarthy got, like, spot snaps every game. Mm -hmm. Cade McNamara was the starter last season. Decent quarterback, isn't going to turn it over much, isn't going to win you a game, but also won't lose you one. Hassan Haskins ripped off a season that I never saw coming. Halfway through the season, I was angry that Blake Corum wasn't getting all the snaps. And then Hassan Haskins just took over. Now Blake Corum mostly will. Yes. (laughs) Now it's going to be him and Donovan Edwards, who I'm very excited about. Mm -hmm. They could be the best two-headed monster at running back in the Big Ten. Ronnie Bell is back off an injury. He started the season against Western Michigan last year. Just making big play after big play. One catch for 76 yards. Yeah. Well, he did was more than, I, f- I forgot the one-handed catch he made was was brought back by a flag. Yeah, but he had like a 30-yard punt return, hurt himself on that punt return, mm-hmm. was out for the season. He's back. Cornelius Johnson is back for his last year. I mean, the, the whole receiving core is basically back. Eric All is back. Mm-hmm. The tight ends. There's been a lot of speculation that Donovan Edwards could be put in a slot position at times. Um, yeah, he he's he's got the talent to go out there and do it. So, yeah, yeah honestly, they are so stacked at the skill positions this year that starting slot receiver over the past two years, Mike Sainer still has gotten a lot of snaps at corner, mm-hmm. partly because they need some help and partly because there are more talented guys coming in and there that are more yeah. talented than him. So he's going to play some corner this year as well as some receiver. Mm-hmm. This team – even though they're dealing with turnover on defense. Their schedule is so tissue soft <laughs> mm-hmm. that at least they, if they don't win at least nine games, it's a, it's a disappointment. Yeah. And this is even with them replacing their number one corner last year, bringing in Will Johnson, five-star player from Gross Point. He's most likely going to start from the jump. He was either going to Michigan or Alabama, so he'll have a few games to get in, get up to speed. DJ Turner is back on the in the other corner spot, so that helps a lot. Actually, Jamon Green is back too. I forgot about that. So him and Will Johnson will most likely split split it there. But yeah, questions at linebacker, questions at who's going to replace on the defensive line, mm-hmm. especially the edges. Mozzie Smith is is expected to have a huge season. He was a five star guy coming into Michigan. He picked Michigan over Alabama. Big time defensive tackle. He was recently listed on, I think, Sports Illustrated and twenty four seven dropped a list of like the top fifty freak athletes in the country, and he was like top twenty on the list. He's like six three, three hundred something pounds, and he's just a hell of an athlete. But yeah, a lot of places to replace on defense. The offense is stacked with talent. Cade McNamara and JJ McCarthy are having a quarterback battle. Mm-hmm. But it still won't be settled by the time the season starts. Both of them will play. I think the Maryland game will give you somewhat of an idea of who the starter will be. And the Iowa game, which is the fifth game of the season at Iowa, Mm -hmm. is when there's going to be a guy that plays that entire game. I don't think there's going back and forth by the time you get to the Iowa game. There's going to be either J.J. or Cade taking all the snaps. And me, along with the rest of the Michigan fan base, wants it to be J.J. McCarthy. But... They, it, everything out of camp is saying Cade has gone up another level and J.J. has gone up another level. Mm-hmm. And they've basically been neck and neck all throughout camp. So I guess you're going to need some game film to officially name who's the starter after the first three or four weeks. Yeah. J.J. has the upside. Cade has the stable play. Not going to make many mistakes. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you look at the schedule – the first three weeks are pretty much a joke. <laughs> Colorado State, Hawaii, UConn, first three weeks, all home games. They should average well over 40 points. Yeah. It, yeah. E- even if they have holes to fill on defense, but they won't give up many points mm-hmm. those first three weeks. Week four, they play Maryland, which isn't the first huge challenge, but will be a challenge because Maryland is bringing back almost their entire offense, and they have real talent. Mm-hmm. Talia Tungavaloa is a good quarterback. And their receiving core is really talented. They bring back Rakeem Jarrett, who was a five-star guy. Dante Demas, a big body receiver. They're going to put some pressure on that defense in week four. And they could hit 21, 24, possibly. Hope not 28 or more. Mm -hmm. 
but I don't think Maryland's defense will be anywhere good enough to stop Michigan's offense. Going to Iowa week five, to me it depends on whether or not it's a night game. If it's at noon or 3.30, I expect Michigan to pull it out. Mm-hmm. But night games at Iowa, are, they're almost impossible for top teams. Right. The only top team I've seen go into Iowa and win in the past few years, I believe, was I think it was Penn State in like 2018. And they won literally at the last second. Like it was a game-winning touchdown pass to beat Iowa at Iowa at night. They've beaten Ohio State. They've beaten Michigan. They've beaten everybody. Mm-hmm. So if it's a night game... I might count that as a loss, but we'll have to see. Yeah. Next week at Indiana, they're retooling and figuring out things. I think that's a win. Then a tougher stretch starts. Penn State at home and Michigan State at home. Michigan usually pl- outplays Penn State in home games. Mm-hmm. I've only seen Penn State beat Michigan here a few times. I don't think – I think they're going to be better than last year, but I don't think there's going to be a major improvement. Mm-hmm. I I see them winning that game. The game against Michigan State is terrifying. It it man, it is it it is insane to me that Mel Tucker is two and zero against them. I think Michigan is the better team. I think they're going to be focused this year. They're they're not just going to lose focus this year, and I don't think they have a running back that's just going to completely break them and just flip the game like that. I think Michigan wins, even if it's close. Hmm. I think they beat Rutgers on the road. I think they beat Nebraska at home. They beat Illinois at home. So at this point, it's either 10-2 and two or 11-1. and one. I could be overconfident. There is a chance they could lose to Michigan State. Hmm. There's a chance they could lose to Penn State. Like I said, if they play at night against Iowa, that's most likely a loss. That's three potential losses. Mm-hmm. But I think they I think they go into Ohio State with either one or two losses. And this one, I'm terrified. <laughs> they're I, they're they're coming back for a vengeance. Yeah. And we'll we'll get to Ohio State later. So I think I'll just save that for when we get to Ohio State. But this Michigan team, because of the schedule, they got eight home games. Mm-hmm. Penn State and Michigan State are at home. The first three games are, pan I mean not pancake. Um, I forget the word, but it's, it's very soft. Cakewalk. <laughs> yeah. Cakewalk. Thank you. It's a cakewalk. Maryland could be a bit of a challenge, but I expect that win. It, it's going to come down to the Ohio state game mm-hmm. of who makes it to the big 10 championship. And I'll save that for the Ohio state preview. Okay. But yeah, they're, they're talented enough. The schedule is soft enough and they got eight home games. It should be at least nine wins, at least. And you're on the J.J. train? Yes. Okay. He's the type of quarterback you need to take you to the next level. This is the comparison I'm going to make. I'm not saying he's Trevor Lawrence. Let's get that out the way right now. Mm-hmm. I think it's a Kelly Bryant and Trevor Lawrence type of situation. I'm just Kelly Bryant got them to the playoff the year before Trevor Lawrence got there. J.J. happened to be there. Yeah. But next year, it was clear. By the end of camp, it was clear that Trevor Lawrence was be- was a better quarterback than Ch- Kelly Bryant, mm-hmm. even as a true freshman. Dabo starts Kelly Bryant at the beginning of the season. He also plays Trevor Lawrence, and Trevor Lawrence just wipes him off the field Yeah, when it comes to flat-out playing. That I, could happen. Cade could play great. Who knows? But just, J.J. is the higher-level talent. I just get a little bit nervous, and I know it's a, di- it's a different talent level, but I get a little bit nervous of like getting inklings of the Shea Patterson, Dylan McCaffrey ordeal where I think because of what they accomplished last year I think that's already out the window yeah but all, the, all those many Michigan fans including me wanted to see Dylan McCaffrey get his shot and it never happened I'm just scared that Michigan is going to keep doing this flip-flop of like playing both quarterbacks how long do you think they could do it I, I think it's I think it's going to keep going the first three weeks because they they haven't determined it yet yeah and and again they have time to be able to do that yeah but once they decide, they need to commit. If Absolutely, it is, I agree. if it is JJ, they got to commit, and that's you know that's the thing that we said way back when with that other situation. So I'm that's the only thing that I guess makes me nervous about Michigan is can they get consistency up front? Like just pick your quarterback and go with it. Yeah, and the replacements on defense are real too. Mm-hmm. 
they've they've got a lot to fix. Like Junior Colson is your one really good standout linebacker. And then it's a bunch of unproven and young guys. Yeah. You got DJ Turner at corner, Jamon Green is experienced, Will Johnson is in. You don't know how it's all gonna shape out as a whole group. Mm-hmm. Safeties, RJ Moten is pretty good. He's no Dax Hill. Yeah. D line, Mozzie Smith could be a monster. Who's gonna step up on the edges? Mm-hmm. There are several questions. Right. But the the schedule sets it up for them to figure it out mm-hmm. at a good pace. Yeah. Does that mean I'm up? It's your time, sir. All righty. It's your time to sign to shine. Little brother, <laughs> Michigan State, as we're called. Um, crazy season last year. I there's no other way about it. Uh, I don't know. Kenneth Walker was a godsend. Um, we knew that he had potential to do that going into the season, but we weren't a hundred percent sure because this offensive line is terrifying in a bad way. He had, he had to literally, he had to step in and become one of the best running backs in program history Yeah, for them to pull off what they did last year. Heisman and candidate, he one of the greatest seasons I've seen in a long time for Michigan state, able to knock off Michigan again. I, I don't know how they do it. I, I'm not sure. It's, it's just weird. I know Kenneth Walker was the, the guy, um, and now they have to replace him and that's terrifying, but they got some guys. They brought in Jarek Broussard. They got Jalen Berger. I think those guys are going to be talented enough as a one-two punch. They bring back Jordan Simmons, too, who's a quality, yeah. a decent back in his own right. Yeah, they like their backfield, even if Berger or Broussard don't really work out or something, they got a lot of guys that have that have been there. Elijah Collins is still there. Uh, Harold That's Joyner crazy, is technically still there. So, you know, there, there's guys there that can fill in, and I think – I don't think the running game is going to be a problem, and I think they're going to still try to establish a run game. Um, so I'm not like too worried about their offense as a whole. Obviously, the offense quarterback line, and receiver they're set. O- offensive line is still terrifying. Um, they're not very good, um, but hopefully they will be improved. And yes, quarterback Peyton Thorne is he the second best quarterback in the Big Ten? He very well could be. It's possible. I, th- I think that's my point. It's possible. Um, Michigan State, they don't, they're not dealing with a quarterback battle. They're not dealing with transfer quarterbacks that we're seeing all over the place, especially the Big Ten actually now. Um, Peyton Thorne is, I think, a surefire to just – he's similar to Cade McNamara, maybe a little bit more highlights, but most of the time he's not going to lose you a game. He's very controlled. We got Jaden Reed back. That's exciting. Um, so we still have some big plays lost Jalen Naylor. It's a little bit disappointing, but you know, what are you going to do? And there's guys that are going to step up this year. I think, uh, Trey Mosley needs to step up this year. I think he's a big one for tight end. I am terrified of Keon Coleman. Yes. I I was getting there. Okay. <laughs> Keon Coleman is six, two, two, ten. And he has all the makings. He's an athletic he's a freak of nature yeah yeah and that's one that i'm super excited to see if he can get a connection uh with peyton thorne right away to have him and Jaden reed that's a good one too for receiver um i like that we have antonio gates jr just his namesake that's cool to have um so realistically again i'm not i'm not concerned about the offense um we're going to play some like two tight end sets, I'm sure, at some point. Try to just pound the ball. The defense. The defense is the scary part. Um, Last year, the pass rush was really good. The secondary was horrific. They were awful. One of the worst I've ever seen. I don't know how they were able to win at times with those guys. Um, But I think they can make some improvements in the secondary. Um, They did bring in, um, let me see, Amir Speed from Georgia. He's 6'3", 210. He's got the body for it. Didn't really work out in Georgia. Maybe he'll figure it out here. Again, I like the metrics for it. So I'm hoping that he can figure something out. Um, what's the other key transfer? Uh, Jacoby Winman, 
from uh, UNLV's linebacker. Hopefully that bolsters the linebacking core. They're not bad, um, but they do need to retool, I guess, a little bit. Um, let's see. They lost. What's his face? Which position? Because there's somebody I'm about to bring up. Jacob Panishik. That's exactly who yeah. I was just about to bring up. That's who do they you, lost. Do you think they can find a replacement for what he brought? Um, I mean, I think like a lot of people bring up uh, Jeff Petrowski. As, he's a D end. Um, he's got a lot of motor. A, a lot of people think that they can figure it out. But yeah, like they lost some of their pass rush, but I think they can retool it to get back to similar of what they were. And I think that's going to be a a decent part of their game again. And that's that's where their defense thrives is just getting quarterback pressures, forcing them into errors because if the quarterback's able to just sit there in the pocket, they're going to get they're going to torch the secondary. Now again, Mel Tucker has been all offseason talking about they can't have that again. It's not going to be a thing. He's he's a defensive guy, so I'm hoping hoping they figure it out. Cuz the secondary is like the biggest worry for me. And we take a look I'll look at their schedule right now. Their schedule, of course, early on, pretty much of a cakewalk. Western Michigan, I think that's a really good opening game, actually. It should be an easy win, but at the same time, the way Western plays, they'll challenge our secondary. So right away, you're going to know in like an air raid type offense, can we hang? Then we go play Akron. That's at home. That's We're, We're paying Akron to come play. Washington... I don't think it'll be a big deal. The return of Michael Penix. My, Michael that Penix, Indiana killer. <laughs> former Indiana quarterback, Michael Penix. It's at Washington, and it's a night game. That's the only nerve-wracking part about it. It's on Last the time they went West Coast for a night game, Herm Edwards snuck up and got him. Yeah. So, a night game away, other side of the country, it does make me nervous, but I think the talent should overcome there. So, I'm, I'm thinking that should be a win. Um, then they play Michigan, uh, Minnesota, and that's at home. So, that would be a tough one. Yeah. Minnesota has a transfer quarterback, though, right? It is Tanner Morgan for his 15th year in college football. Really? What The last year of Tanner Morgan. Oh, man. He's back again. Okay, so I guess depending on what Tanner Morgan decides <laughs> to do that year, if he's going to be back yeah. to being good or bad, we'll see. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit of a test. And then Maryland, like we said, they have a good offense. Another test, at least for the secondary. But I think Michigan State can slow the game down and be okay. And then October 8th, I mean, Ohio State, just hang on and hope for the best. I, I Again, I don't – they need to win one of these three games. This stretch is terrifying. Ohio State, the only good thing, that's a, that's in East Lansing. Wisconsin, that's in East Lansing. I don't think you should be afraid of Wisconsin because it's at home. Yeah, If it was in Madison. That, yeah. Right. That helps a lot. Um, and then they got to play Michigan on the road. I don't really care about home or away in these games lately. It doesn't seem to matter. Um, so they need to win one of those three games is key. And like you said, I think Wisconsin's probably the most likely. The Michigan game is just, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know how to predict the Michigan, Michigan state game this year. I won't know what to think anymore. If Michigan state, if Mel Tucker is three and zero against Michigan. Yeah. I, I just won't know what to think. Because, again, I just think Michigan State has that team where they can slow people down, and Michigan already plays slow. Where, like, we said it a couple times last year where, like, Michigan struggles from playing from behind. And I think they're going to have that same issue this year. So, it could be another really close game, which is exciting. I'll be excited for it. But I'm also not banking on Michigan State pulling that win off again. But after playing Ohio State and then Wisconsin, Michigan may look easy to play. <laughs> I don't know. Um, then they got Illinois. Should be a win. Rutgers. Should be a win. Indiana. Should be a win. Then they got Penn State at the end of the season. That's another big one. Because that could decide a lot of things for them. Whether they you know, make a really good bowl game again. Whether they're competing for maybe a Big Ten championship. Maybe. But... That game will be big for them depending on where they end up. And like I said, that it's that three game stretch in October that 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 basically gives you Michigan State's season. 
So how many potential losses do you see on the schedule? I'm thinking, I mean, it's it's easy, like three, but it could be three to four, five if they let somebody, you know, get under them. If somebody gets hurt, hopefully not, that doesn't happen. Right. But yeah. yeah, or like you said, like Washington, that crazy, like night away, mm-hmm. like all the things kind of lining up against Michigan State. So – I definitely can see a 10-win season, but the scary thing is there could be seven, eight wins. That's kind of the nerve-wracking part is it feels like there's a a, def- a decent range of outcomes for this team. Um, and it, again, it it goes back to the defense, I think. I think the defense is like the biggest thing because even if the offensive line struggles a little bit, I think they have enough weapons at running back and guys that do different things that they can figure it out. Whether they need a guy to just run through people, they have that. If they need more of an elusive back, they have that as well. And then the receiver, like I think their receivers are going to be really good. I think their pass game is going to be good. So if they can keep tempo and control the game, I think they'll be just fine. Um, I just need to see improvement off the secondary. If we see improvement off the secondary right away and we're still getting the same pass rush that they saw last year, then I think 10 wins is is back on the table and they could be a really scary team. Um, but we do, if we don't see any improvements, that's where that 7-8 games comes back into play. And people would be really disappointed. And I probably would too. I think 9 games, I think you're happy. I think you're content. But if you, start, if you dip to 8, you're like, oh, maybe we... That, I feel like if they got eight eight wins, they slipped up on one, and that's the concern. I think that's it. So, you got anything to so, add? So most likely nine and three. Yes, I, I think that's I think that's a pretty not safe, but I think that's more of a safer bet that they get nine. But I do think they could get ten because if they win one of those Ohio State, Wisconsin, Michigan games then I think it makes the Penn State game easier, even though it's the end of the season. But I think at the end of the season, last game of the season, maybe season riding on the line, I think they could win that game too. So I think, like I said, one of those games in that tough stretch, that could be their season. But if they lose to Washington right away, it makes me nervous. Then I think 10 is off the table. So I, I'm around the same area, 8-4. and four. I think I don't think a eight and four season should be alarming. No, because but, there was so much magical magical seasoning sprinkled on that season last year. Mm-hmm. The odds of that happening last year were slim, very slim. It happened, but it couldn't have been predicted at all. I don't think there are a bunch of takeaways you could take out of last season mm-hmm. besides Peyton Thorne as the quarterback. I, honestly, yeah. I mean, it's another hall of transfers, more offensive line problems. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you, you you would have to expect that some of that fa- like fairy dust stuff from last season just happens again. Yeah, like one of the quarter one of the running backs just hits. Mm-hmm. I believe Keon Coleman is going to eventually be a beast, but Keon Coleman and Jaden Reed are just like the best pair in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Like the transfers on defense are instant monsters. Yeah. The odds of that happening another year, uh, it's it's just not it's not very likely. It doesn't happen to many teams. Yeah. So if they win eight and four, I don't think Michigan State fans should be worried. Yeah. Like the best talent is still coming. Right. Like he's recruiting mm-hmm. more talent to like keep in the program and not keep going through the transfer thing. Yeah. But I, I, I just think, I think expectations should be more reasonable. Yeah, if you win eight games and you and you win a bowl game, mm-hmm. if they're if they're nine and four going into the off season after winning a bowl game, that's a really good season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. I and I mean I agree with you. Um, I just think it's that point where you know when you get you get so excited about a season like last year, and then you expect almost bigger things, which you can't really have bigger things. Um, that an eight win season would be kind of disappointing because you're expecting to knock off one of those big names at some point. 
And if you didn't do that this year, which I think an eight and four season would show that you didn't knock off any of the big teams would be a disappointment. Or you you beat one of the big teams, but you lost one of like a big underdog. So I think that's where the disappointment more or less would come in. Um, and then the other thing I think too is like people are going to compare like the Ken Walker season with what's coming now. Like Jared Broussard, you know, transfer. They can still have a quality stable of running backs. Looks like, you know, like people, I think people are just going to expect that again, which you can't. But I think they're like, oh, another transfer running back that has talent, but he struggled just a little bit because he was on a bad team. Now they bring him in here and he'll light it up. That's not going to happen. Um, one other thing that I did want to mention because it's kind of funny and interesting, and it could actually uh, be a big deal. New kicker, Jack Stone. I forgot. Number one kicking recruit in the country. I did not realize they had a new kicker. Yeah. Well, what was, what was his? Matt Coughlin. I, I, it felt like he was there for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, he was there for five, so that's basically 10. Yeah. Um, he's, he's gone. Wow. Yeah. So, Jack Stone, he's one of the best kicking recruits, and he's got the job, but he's a freshman. And uh, could win and lose games with kicks. So, that one is actually interesting to watch um, because, again, Coughlin was kind of a shoe in Like, He's almost like Jake Moody for Michigan, like almost automatic at times. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, Michigan State has a big season ahead of them again, and they could be the the upset team again where you don't want to play them if you're fighting for a Big Ten championship. So we'll see. We will see what happens. So I guess we got to get to the big team now. All right. Uh, here we go. So, has been finally C.J. Stroud. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a top five pick most likely in next year's draft. Travion Henderson Henderson was instantly one of the best backs in the country as a true freshman. Mm-hmm. Jackson Smith and Jigbo was the best receiver on the team, but two other guys went in the first round of this year's draft. He's back. He'll also be a top ten pick. Yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. is there. He's going to be a first round pick when he comes out. Emeka Ibuka is there. He's probably going to be a first-round pick when he comes. We know how this goes. Yeah. We know how this goes. Mm-hmm. Now, there was news a few days ago that one of their backups that they were expecting to be to get some carries more than usual this year, Evan Pryor, he uh, has a he had a season-ending injury in camp mm. last week, so they'll have to find another backup to kind of help them in that department. But the offense, they're – they're going to average like 40 something a game. Like is what is there to talk about? Yeah. They're the Buckeyes. <laughs> yeah, what is what is there to talk about? Now on the defensive side, it gets interesting. Because this is the reason why they didn't live up to potential last year. Mm-hmm. They have talent even though even though they had a lot a lot of young guys, they had a bunch of talent. But nobody expected them to be as soft as they were. Yeah. There weren't many teams that could punch them in the mouth and keep punching. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. But the teams that could, Oregon and Michigan, they punched them and they kept punching in Ohio State. Had nothing to come back and besides scoring a few extra points, their defense couldn't stop the bleeding. Yeah. This year they have a new defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles from Oklahoma State. He come he came to Oklahoma State and they got worse before they got better. Mm-hmm. But by the time he left last year, they were one of the best defenses in the country. Malcolm Rodriguez, Rodrigo, Mm -hmm. was the leader of their defense at Oklahoma State last year. And they have a corner that transferred in from Oklahoma State. Give me a second. I got to find it really quick. His name is Tanner McAllister, Mm. one of the better corners in the country from last year. He comes over with Jim Knowles. And a lot of Ohio State fans are hoping for instant success Mm -hmm. because – they missed some things that they usually have last year. They usually have a standout pass rusher. They didn't have one last year. Yeah. They just had a bunch of guys up with potential that never could truly stand out. They usually have at least one linebacker that can like go from sideline to sideline and make big plays. They didn't have one last year. And their corners were young and inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Very talented, 
very highly recruited, but inconsistent. I don't know if Jim Knowles can make a quick fix. Now he has more talent talent than when with what he started with at Oklahoma State when he first got there. Right. This would be a situation where it was possible for them to turn things around. But I have to see if they if they're tough. Mm-hmm. That's something you just have to show. Like we all know what type of talent they have. Right. We all know the five stars and the four stars. When you get punched in the mouth. Can you come back and just take a team out? Mm-hmm. Like Ohio State teams in the past have. Now, there are a few guys that could break out this year. Top pass rusher in the country last year, Jack Sawyer. He was only a true freshman, but he came in with tons of hype, and he played a ton. Now, since he was a true freshman, he he didn't have an, a crazy season, but he still had a pretty good season. Mm-hmm. JT, uh, I forgot how to pronou- pronounce his last name. JT Tumo, Tuamolau, I think that's how you say it. He was the top defensive tackle in the country. He came in, did what he could do, but it wasn't enough. And they have their most experienced defensive end. I'm trying to find his name. Zach Harrison, a guy that is from Ohio, came out of high school, was down to Michigan and Ohio State, and decided to stay home. Hasn't fully lived up to his potential yet. Ohio State fans are expecting him to at least – take a next step to be one of those NFL draft guys like Chase Young or the Bosa's Mm -hmm. Jack Sawyer and Zach Harrison. I'm expecting them both to step up. Still have questions at linebacker. There's expected improvement in the DBs, but we'll have to see there most likely will be because they're that talented, but can Jim Knowles do it? Can he make them as tough as they used to be in those urban Meyer years Mm -hmm. and the Justin Fields year? when they made the playoff and honestly were better than Clemson in that game, but still ended up losing. Yeah. So expected crazy offense. Can the defense get on track? We'll have to see. They're most likely going to like 11 and one (laughs) Mm -hmm. until the last week of the season. Uh, Well, I mean, especially too, if, if they beat off, take Notre Dame week one, it's just, that's like their biggest Question mark at the very, at the very beginning because that's where you can get punched right. Notre away. Dame has they got a new quarterback mm-hmm. who's a redshirt freshman or sophomore, new head coach Marcus Freeman, their best receiver got hurt and is out for the season. Avery Davis, they've had to bring a few guys over from the from the DB core to try and help the receivers. That's not a good sign. They do have potentially the best tight end in the country, in Michael Mayer. But how how much can you depend on them? Mm-hmm. And they lose their top running back from last year. Yeah. And their defense has been r- really good, but not great in the past few years. Right. So I I expect Ohio State to beat them by double digits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going as a, I I think that they're probably going to beat Michigan in that last game. I I I would love to see Michigan win in Columbus. I've never seen Michigan win in Columbus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have never seen Michigan win in Columbus. Ohio State. Could pretty easily run the table uh, this season, unless something happens. I don't. I mean, Michigan State's at East Lansing. Eh. Listen, uh, a lot of people are expecting them to make the playoff and get back to the championship this year. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very possible. Yeah, but yeah, we'll have to see. Mm-hmm. Next up, Penn State. James Franklin hasn't made the playoff yet. He's won the Big Ten one time. They went to the Rose Bowl and lost to USC that year. Mm-hmm. Some Penn State fans are getting kind of antsy. They expect more because besides Ohio State, he's been the best recruiter in the Big Ten. Yeah, Penn State has had top five classes a few times in the past six, seven years, and the talent hasn't fully lived up to it. Yep. <coughs> Sean Cliff. <coughs> <laughs> he wasn't even a five-star. He's – they just brought in Drew Aller, who was the top quarterback in the country, but yeah. he's not playing this year because of Sean Clifford, yeah, who is so old that at this point he owns his own business. Mm. <laughs> through, through NIL, a businessman through like NIL it. and through being like 22, 23 years old, mm-hmm. he's already a businessman. So when he's done, he's gonna be making money. Yeah, but in terms of playing football, last year he was playing pretty well before he got hurt, but then he got hurt and things kind of fell apart. They didn't have any trusted backup. For some reason, they had one of the worst run games in the country last year. 
I think they averaged like two and a half yards a carry. <laughs> and even if you don't have the special back that Penn State has every few years. They averaged 3.2 yards okay. as a team. Yeah, as a team, 3.2. Even if you don't have that special back, this is Penn State. You're supposed to have the you're supposed to have a high level offensive line and quality enough running backs to rush for more than three point two a game. Mm-hmm. It 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 was there was no excuse for what happened last season. Now I don't know how much more the offensive line will improve this year. They they're more experienced, but they bring in the number one running back in the country, Nick Singleton, mm-hmm. a Pennsylvania kid. Some people were comparing him to the level of talent Sa- Saquon Barkley had, but. Yikes. Yeah, well, have, that's a lot. We'll have to see, but well, he he's the top running back in the country. He's True. there's going to be a lot expected out of him this year because they didn't get a lot out of their running back group last year. They also bring in Noah Kane from LSU. No, not from LSU. Noah Kane transferred to to LSU. I don't know why I said that. Mm-hmm. Nick Singleton is going to be the guy that they expect to give them big plays throughout the season. In the receiving core, they lose Jahan Dotson. Big loss. Yes. They bring in a transfer from Western Kentucky, Mitchell Tinsley, who was their better receivers last year when they just put up ridiculous numbers, video game numbers. Mm-hmm. They're expecting him to be big there for them. Uh, Parker Washington is Parker Washington is back. Penn State fans have been high on him for a long time. Now is finally the time for him to live up to that and put up big numbers, mm-hmm. especially with Jahan Dotson gone. They have Theo Johnson at tight end. I don't know if he's going to be like a Mike Jasicki type or a Jesse James type. He has the talent to be one of those top tight ends, but he has to prove it. Mm-hmm. On the defensive end, this is where they have to prove a lot of stuff. They were kind of a disappointment last year. Now, they bring in transfer Chop Robinson from from Maryland, one of the better names in college football, Chop. Hmm. They expect him to be one of their better defensive ends. Uh, they lost uh, Brandon Smith one of their experienced linebackers to the draft. They bring back one of the better defensive backfields, DB cores in the Big Ten. Kalen King from Cast Tech in Detroit. He was a true freshman last year. Mm-hmm. He was one of their best corners instantly as he came in. And they also have Joey Porter Jr. Yep. Who is more than just the son of Joey Porter. <laughs> he is a pre he's a good corner. He does get burned quite a lot, but when he's not getting burned, he's pretty good. So, here's the thing. They start off at Purdue. Some people think Purdue is going to be, like, in contention for the Big Ten West this year. Some people think they're only going to be, like, a six-win team. I have no idea what to think about this first game. Yeah. So, it's 50-50 to me. Week two against Ohio win. I think they go into Auburn and win. So, two and one. Mm -hmm. You beat Central Michigan. You beat Northwestern. I think they most likely lose to Michigan at Michigan. I think you beat Minnesota. I think you lose to Ohio State. They could trip up against Indiana or Minnesota. Mm. I do not have enough trust in Sean Clifford, even though he's the fifth, six-year guy. Right. I don't think their receiving core is great enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, their defense should be good enough to stop both of those teams. But Maryland is going to be sneaky, competent. Right. And Indiana, you never know. They brought in a bunch of transfers. They should beat Rutgers. And like you said, it's a 50-50 that last game against them in uh, Michigan State. This could be a 9 or 10 win team. That's what Penn State fans are expecting. Mm-hmm. This could also be 8-4 and four team. Yeah. I think more 8-4. and four, I mean, I, I think more 9-3 and three than 8-4. and four. Now, it'll it, them or Michigan State, I think it'll most likely switch between one being 9 wins and one being 8 wins. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm just going to go with Penn State right now. Mm. Because eventually, James Franklin has to start living up to this stuff at some point. He has so much talent. It, it, Sometimes it just doesn't work. He has so much talent. Is you uh, Even if this isn't his most talented team ever. Jim Harbaugh you, has he's a lot a, of talent. James Franklin has more. <laughs> well, Jim, him and Jim Harbaugh are kind of like even – in their Big Ten eras, which is the surprising part considering how much talent James Franklin has had mm-hmm. and kind of wasted. So I, I'm just going to guess and go 9-3. and three. At best, 10-2. and two, But I think 9 wins most likely. Speeding it up a little. Next we go to Maryland. I said during Michigan, they got Talia Tungavaloa, Raheem Jarrett, 
Dante Demas. You got some good running backs. The defense is most likely going to be very disappointing once again. Yeah. They don't have the overall talent to be a high-level Big Ten team, but they do have some talent on defense. They just brought in a high four-star linebacker named Jay Sean Barham from Maryland. A lot of people think he's going to start from the jump. They also have some experienced guys that are pretty good. They're most likely a six-win team again. They should make it to a bowl game. But I just I just don't think they can take out. They might be able to sneak up on one of the better teams in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. But I, I just I don't know. Michigan, Michigan State, they, sh- they should beat Indiana at Indiana, I think. They should beat Northwestern. Maybe they could upset Wisconsin. Yeah. Maybe that could be the one. But most likely six and six, I think seven and five is the best case scenario. They got enough talent to go seven and five. They're the perfect middle of the road team. Yeah. They're they're gonna be exciting enough to get some people to come watch the games because their offenses are they're gonna put up a good amount of points. Yeah. But the defense is just gonna let so much go by. So yeah. Next up, Indiana. They've done a complete retool with this entire team. Yep. Now Tom Allen, they had that COVID season where they beat Michigan mm-hmm. and finished second in the East, I believe, second or third. And Indiana fans thought that was just a sign of things to come. Yeah. It wasn't. Last year they went they went three and nine. Or two and ten. I can't remember which one. But they just they were they were very bad. Yeah. Well that that's the year there was a lot of Michael Penix hype. Yes. He 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 threw up a lot of fifty fifty balls mm-hmm. and his receivers were talented enough to come up to go up and get him. But this year they bring in thirteen total transfers. For help on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. A few guys to point out. At quarterback, you bring in Connor Bazelak from Missouri. He had a lot of hype after the COVID season at Missouri. Last year, couldn't live up to it. Was decent, but didn't live up to what people thought. Mm-hmm. He's coming in, and he's battling with Jack Tuttle. They still haven't named a starter, so it's between them two. Running backs, Josh Henderson from North Carolina, and Sean Shivers from Auburn. Two talented guys. Sean Shivers is kind of a favorite of mine. He's 5'7", like 185, Mm -hmm. but he runs like a power back. There's a play where they played against Alabama two years ago where he just like completely knocked the Alabama linebacker's helmet clean off by just like running through his chest. (laughs) I I like Sean Shivers. Not sure how much of an impact they'll make. They got enough talent to be quality in the Big Ten, but the O-line isn't expected to be anything amazing. On defense, they bring in linebacker. Jared Casey from Kentucky, a guy who was a four-star at Kentucky, played a little but never was able to really rise up the depth chart. He's expected to play a lot at Indiana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they just got a bunch of guys to fill in holes. Right. And they they did bring in a, one of their better recruiting classes, I think actually the best recruiting class in program, program history. Mm-hmm. Their best recruit is Desan McCullough from Indiana, 6'5", 235, defensive end. He's almost a five-star. He's probably going to play a lot as a freshman. It would be awesome for them to make a bowl game, but I don't know if they will. I think they could lose to Illinois week one. Hmm. And it's a home game. I think they could lose that game. I think they beat Idaho and Western Kentucky. I think they lose to Cincinnati. They could lose to Nebraska. I think they most likely lose to Nebraska. Hmm. Lose to Michigan. Maryland could beat them. That's a bit of a 50-50. They should beat Rutgers. (laughs) They should beat Rutgers. But Shiano could have them real typed up for that one. Who knows? Lose to Penn State, lose to Ohio State, lose to Michigan State. <laughs> Purdue, we'll see. Purdue's most likely going to be better. This is most likely like a 4-8 and eight team. Mm-hmm. If they go 5-7, and seven, it's an improvement over last year. But, yeah. And it, it's, it's a small improvement. Not what, it, what, not what Indiana fans want, but it's, it's what you get. They may be the Bruno Caboclo of <laughs> college football. Two years away from two years away. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll see. Incredible comparison. (laughs) Phenomenal. (laughs) Lastly, Rutgers. They're rebuilding. Poor Rutgers. Listen, Shiano gave Michigan a scare last year. Yeah, that's true. He deserves a lot of points for giving Michigan a scare last year. But they're still not talented enough. I mean, Noah Vedrill is their quarterback. He's not a Big Ten level quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's he's more of a like group of five. Uh he's he's yeah, he's not the guy on this level. 
Now, they do have a guy behind him that was a freshman last year that was a four-star guy, Gavin Wimsat. He has a big arm, and he can run. He's a very talented runner, but he's not very accurate or consistent. Hmm. If they can hone his skills and get him playing at a pretty high level in the Big Ten, they can start making bowl games because the kid has enough talent if it all comes together. But they have to decide who they want to play more. Yeah. If you you want to play Noah Vedral, you have consistent below average play. <laughs> you play Gavin Wimsat, you have a higher chance to upset teams, but you also have a higher chance of just getting bombed by teams. Yeah. It's a tough choice for Greg Schiano. Honestly, if I was him, I'd go for the higher talent option and just let him go through his lumps and develop. I'd go Gavin Wimsat. They do bring in a few transfers, some guys that could help. I don't think I don't know how much it's going to help because the offense just isn't honestly not good enough. Last year they lost Isaiah Pacheco, who's been honestly like almost starting for the Chiefs in yeah, preseason. He's this been year. showing out, and a lot of people are excited to see what he can do. Yeah, that's a tough loss for them. They bring in receiver Taj Harris from Syracuse, who's actually like real, but who's giving him the ball? <laughs> who's who's getting him the ball? Can, do will they have chemistry? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. On defense, they have a lot of young pieces. I don't know if you can really trust any of them yet. They had a few guys get hurt in preseason camp. Most likely three wins. If they win four, good job, Rutgers. Moving on to the West. Let's start with the Iowa Hawkeyes, who made the Big Ten Championship last year. They have a yearly expectation usually of like eight to ten wins. Mm Mm-hmm. But recently, it seems like their fan base, it seems like they want more. I'm not sure how reasonable that is, being Iowa. I think it's because for Iowa, this is like... They've had high-level seasons. Right. This is like them being down in a way. Yeah. Because they're kind of skating by to these 8, 10 wins. Yeah. The part that I can understand from the fans is that you go undefeated with C.J. Beathard, and you lose to Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship, what was it, like 13 to 10? Yeah. They went undefeated in the regular season. All they've needed is that next-level quarterback. And now they have to watch Spencer Petras. Again. You got to watch him again. <sighs> and Kirk Ferentz's son was just named offensive coordinator, which no no Iowa fans are excited about. Hmm. Uh, apparently, he's supposed to have some new-aged offensive stuff to fix what they've lost. I, I, don't, I don't know. Nice. Last year, they had Tyler Goodson, who was one of the better running backs in the conference. Yeah, and they wasted him because the O line wasn't good. Although they had Tyler Lindebaum, who was the best center in the country, mm-hmm. and they still couldn't get like consistent, strong offensive line play. So Tyler Goodson was just running into packs of defense. Yeah, every other play. They also can never find a high level receiver. Mm-hmm. They usually are able to find guys that are good enough to be lethal against like mid level Big Ten teams, but not the higher level. They have recruited better lately. And this year they bring in they bring in a guy that they usually don't get. Xavier Noampa. Five five star on some services, high four star on others. He's an Iowa kid. He's a safety. Hmm. I've heard he might not start from the jump, but he's too talented to keep off the field. He's a real legit five star talent that could have went anywhere else. And he decided to stay home. So that's a big hit for them. Like I said, Tyler Goodson, they lost him. They got a freshman running back named Caleb Johnson from Ohio, who they're saying could get a lot of starting snaps. He's 6'1", 215, big body. He's fast, and he has power. Prototypical Iowa running back. Mm-hmm. So he'll get, probably get a ton of snaps. But like you said, Spencer Petrus. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you supposed to expect? Yeah. Out of Spencer Petrus. And some some people wanted their the backup Alex Padilla, who started some games last year, to play more. He's slightly he has slightly more like upside than Spencer Petrus, but he also doesn't have the biggest upside. Right. Until they improve their quarterback pool, they can't hit the next level. But they're still Iowa. Right. So you look at their schedule. South Dakota State week one win. Iowa State week two. Iowa State has yet to get over the hump of beating them. Mm -hmm. So you expect Iowa to win that one. Nevada week three win. Rutgers week four win. If it's a night game, they could beat Michigan. 
that could be a five and zero start. You go to Illinois. Illinois has had a tendency to trip to trip some teams up. Mm-hmm. This could be a scary one, but it should be six and zero if they beat Michigan. Ohio State loss. Yeah. Northwestern win. Purdue. I'm going to say that's a loss. Hmm. Wisconsin at home win. Minnesota on the road. I'm going to say win. And I think Nebraska could beat them at the end. Hmm. Even at it's Iowa. possible. Yeah. Listen, did you okay. did you see what Purdue did to them last year? Aiden O'Connell and those guys yeah. came into Iowa City and just burst their bubble. Yeah. It's a 4 p.m. game. It's not at night. Yeah, I guess by the end of the season, Nebraska will have their season figured out. Because they yeah. get they're retooling a little bit. Like who do you expect do you do you expect that Spencer Petrus is gonna take another step? No. By but, the by the twelfth game, are, are they going to be super confident in their quarterback options? But like you keep saying, they're Iowa. I don't know. They just they magically are. appear. Their defense is going to be tough. Yeah. Their defense is most definitely going to be tough. And one guy that I haven't brought up, and it's pretty disrespectful that I haven't brought him up, is defensive back Riley Moss, hmm. who had a bunch of interceptions last year. In total, he had four? Yeah, he had four. I think he had like three in like the first three weeks, and then it kind of tailed off. But he's one of the best corners in the country, one of the best in the Big Ten, and the rest of their defensive back room is strong too. Their defense is going to be really good and tough for, for almost all Big Ten West teams. They're most likely a 9 or 10 win team again. Mm-hmm. But if Spencer Petras doesn't take that next step, there are some teams in the West that can clip them up. So I think 10 wins at best could be nine. Let's get to the other teams. Wisconsin. When is Graham Mertz going to reach his potential? Five star guy, U.S. All American MVP of that game. And guys that come out of that game are usually superstars. His first game starting at Wisconsin during the COVID season, he throws five touchdowns against Illinois. The hype train is real, and he hasn't had a game with, like, more than three touchdowns since then. Yeah. Last year, he threw 10 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. Beautiful. 59 and a half Percent. completion percentage. 6.9 average. Yeah. That is dink and dunk at its I mean, finest. when you when you never have super high-level receivers – I can understand why you don't put up big numbers, yeah. but that right there, that's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. For the talent he has, he should be better than Alex Hornibrook, who's probably the best Wisconsin quarterback of the past decade. Mm-hmm. Now there is a positive on their offense. They found a guy halfway through the season. I think like more like three or four games into the season because Ches Malusi got hurt. Yeah, Braylon Allen. Wisconsin this- running back at its finest. Even when the guys aren't highly recruited, they just find these guys. He came to Wisconsin as a linebacker recruit. He that, was seven, sound, that sounds like a Wisconsin listen, running back thing. He was 17 during the college football last season. He was 6'2", 235 coming into the college football season mm-hmm. as a 17-year-old true freshman. And in about seven or eight games, he rushed for almost 1,300 yards and 12 touchdowns. Yeah, <laughs> Seven yards a carry. It, it's really just disgusting at this point how they just luck into this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he was not a highly touted running back recruit. He just happened to play running back in high school. Mm-hmm. And they said, oh, Ches got hurt. Braylon, you want to play running back again? Sure, I'll play. 6'2", 235, speed. He instantly becomes one of the best running backs in the Big Ten. Yeah. He's, he's back, and he's most likely just going to have a monster season. Like, he's too big and too fast and too good for most teams. Yeah. And he's only 18. Besides him, their receiver options are never, like, very big or extremely talented. But they have a few guys that they're high on. One guy is sophomore receiver. I believe his name is Demir DK, Wisconsin kid. He has some speed. He's a good route runner. They expect to hit him on some big plays. They also brought in a few transfers at receiver. Actually, one. Keontes Lewis from UCLA. He was a four-star guy. They're hoping he can come on. I've never seen a star receiver out of Wisconsin, so I, I don't even know if I can expect it at this point. 
they 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 go through the run game. It's as usual Wisconsin football. They want Graham Mertz to hit the next level, but nobody knows if he will, and it seems unlikely at this point. On defense, they lose some guys, but they always replenish. Mm-hmm. They always do. And they have one of the best linebackers in the country in Nick Herbig, a guy that I believe is a junior now. He, I think he's going to be like a top two or three round draft pick to me. He's fast from sideline to sideline. He's super physical. He's an NFL type linebacker. They're going to be most likely set on defense. But if they don't get any next level out of Graham Mertz, I don't see them winning more than nine games. It could possibly just be eight. Mm -hmm. Week two, they play Washington State. In our Pac-12 preview, I I said Washington State could scare them. Because I think Cameron Ward is going to be a better quarterback than Graham Mertz. (laughs) And that's not okay for Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. They beat New Mexico State, New Mexico State. They lose to Ohio State. Illinois could be a challenge. Hopefully, Northwestern is not a challenge. You better beat North. You better put up at least thirty something points on Northwestern. Graham Mertz, show me something. Game against Wisconsin, fifty fifty. We agreed on that. Purdue could be a toss up, but you should beat Purdue. Should be. I think I during the Maryland preview didn't I say this could be mm-hmm. a sneaky? Yeah, I don't know about this one either. <laughs> Iowa will probably beat them. <laughs> I'll say no. I'll say they beat Nebraska at Nebraska, and I say they beat Minnesota their last game. I think I just said like eight and four. Yeah. And that's that's not that's nothing to be happy about as a Wisconsin fan. No. It just isn't. Nope. Graham Mertz, you got to do it. That's, the, that's their only hope. So is Graham Mertz your Kenny Pickett this year? You may have just put it into existence. Please do it. I I want him. It may be time. There's a difference. I I hated Kenny Pickett (laughs) for three years. I don't hate Graham Mertz. I'm just disappointed in him. Okay. I want him to live up to his talent. He has to. Mm -hmm. Next, Minnesota. Tanner Morgan is back for his 26, whatever year. More like this, it's realistically, it's like it's like sixth. But it feels like he's been there for over ten years. Yeah, I could have swore they got a transfer this year, but wow, he's back. The big thing is Mo Ibrahim is back. Also, he yeah, was that, putting in serious big. work against Ohio State in their first Big Ten game of the year last year. They were going back and forth with Ohio State in the first half, and then Mo Ibrahim got hurt, and Ohio State just took off. Yeah, Mo Ibrahim is a bell cow back. He's going to get a ton of carries even though they have all the talent besides him. In that in that one game he played last year, he had 30 carries. Yes. 163 yards. He, he's a real, <laughs> so, give him the ball, he's going to break tackles. Mm-hmm. He's not the most elusive guy, but he has great vision and he's tough. Yeah. And he's, I expect him, as long as he can stay healthy, I expect him to be there for the rest of the season. In their receiving core, they have a lot of guys that have improved a ton, but they have talent. Dylan Wright was a transfer from Texas A&M last year. He showed a lot of promise but didn't put a whole season together of any real stuff. Michael Brown-Stevens is a quality slot receiver that should step up a lot more. Yeah, besides that, they they have a bunch of unproven guys. Hmm. Daniel Jackson, a guy that's a junior, he has potential to be a star-level receiver in the Big Ten. But I don't know what their offense is. I don't know if they're going to buy more into the passing game like they did in the past. Mm -hmm. Their defense is replacing a lot. They brought in some transfers. They only have a few guys coming back that are going to help really a lot. They lost Boye Mafe to the draft. I think he was a second-round pick to the Seahawks. He was their best edge rusher. Mm -hmm. They're They're very experienced on offense. They got some experience on defense from guys coming back and through transfers. They actually could surprise. Their schedule is not the worst. New Mexico State week one, Western Illinois week two, Colorado week three. That's three and oh. Week four, you most likely lose to Michigan State. You play Purdue at home week five. That could be a win. Play at Illinois week six. That could be a win. I think they lose at Penn State. I think they beat Rutgers. 
I'm not sure about Nebraska. I think they beat Northwestern. I said I think Iowa beats Minnesota, but that could also be a toss-up. And I think Minnesota could beat Wisconsin. Hmm. I think a lot will predicate on if Tanner Morgan can get back to rowing the boat. Yes. Because last year was a big, big dip and disappointment. Minnesota went from people thinking that they could win the Big Ten to being almost a laughing stock. For those that don't remember, they lost a home game to Bowling Green last year. Yeah. They lost a 10-7 to game mm-hmm. to Bowling Green. It was a really dark day in Minnesota. Yeah. I don't expect them to drop any of those this year. Even though they're replacing a lot, they brought in some transfers that should help. At best, this could be a nine-win season. But I don't know. They uh, Guys like Daniel Jackson would have to break out. Mo Ibrahim would have to have a huge season and stay healthy. Their backup, Trey Potts, is very talented too. He rushed for over 500 yards last year. They have to be consistently good on both sides Mm -hmm. throughout this whole average schedule. Yeah. Now, it's possible. I think it's more likely they're around 8-4. and But that's a good bounce back for them after the disappointment of last season. Yeah. God bless Tanner Morgan and his bald head. He looks like a 30-year-old with a full family right now. (laughs) Row the boat, Minnesota. Next, we're going to go to Nebraska. Scott Frost has to be sweating right now Mm -hmm. because things have not gone the way people expected in Nebraska while he's been there. Nope. It's been one disappointment after another. It's been one letdown after another. It's been one failed recruit after another. In his first two recruiting class, I think he brought in at least 10 guys from Florida and at like seven or eight of them were gone by year two. They got to Nebraska and immediately realized they didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. He's also had several four-star recruits that just didn't pan out. And the biggest thing, he pinned his whole first three, four years on Adrian Martinez. And where is he now? At Kansas State. Where I think they're going to have a really good season. (laughs) That's a different situation, though. Yeah. I think what they wanted out of Adrian Martinez in Nebraska, the expectations were too high, even though he had the talent to do it. Mm Mm-hmm. They never had consistent enough receiver play or running backs. And their their defense has honestly been the best part of what they've had the last few seasons. Mm-hmm. But everything else has either been inconsistent or bad. Last year, their special teams might have been the worst I've seen in my life. <laughs> they started off against Illinois making some of the worst special teams plays ever. Yeah, They lost to Michigan State at Michigan State last year because they just gave Jaden Reed a hole wide open the right side of the field. <laughs> For an open 40-yard punt return. Mm -hmm. They were literally the best 3-9 and team in college football history last year. (laughs) They lost all nine games by one score. Yeah. They should have beaten Michigan and Michigan State. Mm -hmm. They lost to Ohio State by a touchdown. They lost to Oklahoma by a touchdown. What happened to them last year doesn't make sense. Yeah. But they were that talented and that bad at the same time. Mm -hmm. This has to be the year things turn around. And I think it is. Okay. I'm not saying 9-10 win conference championship team. I'm saying most likely six or seven wins. All those close games they lost last year, I think they start winning a few. Their defense talent is still good. I think their defense should still be quality. I think they improve on offense because of the pieces they've added and some of the pieces they cut. Their new quarterback comes from Texas. Mm Mm-hmm. Slowly improving. A guy that started several games for Texas last year. Hurt his hand. Played most of the season with a broken hand, I believe. Casey Thompson. I'm starting to lose my voice. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) This is not good. I'm sorry. Could you you talk a little about Nebraska? (laughs) Casey Thompson. <laughs> Here's some stats. Casey Thompson, 24 touchdowns to nine interceptions last year. 63% completion percentage. Um, but, I yeah, I think he's going to give more consistency to their offense and be able to, like, Adrian Martinez is super. <laughs> Are you okay? 
Martinez is super talented. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I think Casey Thompson is just more consistent. Uh, and he can – I think you need consistency in those close games like that. And that's something that he can bring to the table. Now, he doesn't have necessarily the rushing upside as much as Martinez. Um, yeah, he he doesn't run a ton. He can. He only runs when he has to. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll see. I'm not too sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Along with Casey Thompson, they bring in <clears throat> Mar- Marcus. <coughs> oh, my God. Marcus Washington from Texas. They bring in Trey Palmer from LSU. <clears throat> I think they both help the offense a ton. Wow. Okay. So, I have to segue because this is just going to derail our whole Big Ten preview. And it's fine. All the trash teams are left, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Going back to Hard Knocks, Deuce Staley. <laughs> that was something I forgot to bring up. That was one of the funniest moments is he's yelling at his running back committee when he's lost his voice. He's like, I, I lost my voice. And then he's like, this is unacceptable. Yeah, I'm a lot like Deuce Staley right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll, we'll run through the rest. But I expect Nebraska to win at least seven games. I think they beat Northwestern and Ireland. I think they beat Georgia Southern and North Dakota, not Oklahoma. I think they beat Indiana. I think they beat Rutgers. <clears throat> they could lose to Purdue. They could lose to Illinois. They could lose to Minnesota. I think they lose to Michigan. I think they could beat Wisconsin. I think they lose to Iowa. That's around seven and five. Mm-hmm. And that's the season Scott Frost needs. Yeah. I just completely lost my voice in the middle of this whole thing. It's, it's back a little bit, though. Yeah, we're going to run through the rest because I – Kind of wasted time there, even though it wasn't – I couldn't control it. It's all right. Illinois. Year two for for um, Brett Bielema. I think they could be better than people expect. Hmm. They bring in Tommy DeVito from Syracuse, a guy who had one good season for them, and then things just fell off the rails. A lot of injuries. Right. He didn't fit the offense anymore. I think he's a much better fit for this offense. I think he's better than anything they had last year. And I believe in the offensive talent they have, actually. Mm -hmm. I think Chase Brown is one of the most underrated running backs in the conference and in the country. I think he'll end up being an NFL draft pick. Hmm. He rushed for 1,000 yards last year. They got Josh McCray as a a sophomore, who's 6'1", 240. It's a big body monster of a running back. And the true freshman and running backs they brought in are very talented, too. Mm -hmm. I think they all could play. Isaiah Williams is a guy at receiver who went over from quarterback where he started when he came to Illinois. He's about 5'9", 5'10", but he's electric with the ball in his hands. Everything out of camp, they've said he's improved a ton in terms of route running and knowing the receiver position. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be kind of a sleeper. Throughout this season, I think he's going to put up really good numbers. They also have Casey Washington and uh, where, where is his name? Pat Bryant, who's a sophomore. I think they have good talent on offense. On defense, they lose the NFL draft pick. Safety, they got picked by the Lions. Yep. They return a lot of guys though. Kirby Joseph. Yes, they've they've got some experience. I like what they bring back. If they won six games. I wouldn't be incredibly surprised. But I think five and seven is more likely. They beat Wyoming. I think they could beat Indiana. I think they lose to West. I mean, they lose to Virginia. They beat Chattanooga. That's three and one. Mm -hmm. They lose to Wisconsin. Most likely lose to Iowa. Could possibly beat Minnesota. Nebraska needs to get that win, so I'm just going to say they win that one. Lose to Michigan State. Toss up at Purdue. I mean, toss up against Purdue. Lose at Michigan. Beat Northwestern. Mm-hmm. I just counted off, like, I think five five wins. Yeah, it's like up to six. Yeah. You got to knock somebody off to hit six. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they're, <clears throat> they're there yet. But they're good enough to win five. And it's an improvement. Mm-hmm. And that leaves Purdue and Northwestern. Purdue is a team who I was extremely high on. Over the summer and in the off season, Oops. but I'm not super high anymore. Yeah, and that's because they lose Milton Wright, who got kicked off the team because of academic issues, I believe. Hmm. <clears throat> they bring back Aiden O'Connell. Yep. 
But yeah, they're they're scrambling for uh, parts in the receiving core. Oh, there it goes again. <laughs> their running back core has hasn't been great in their past few years. Mm. It's still not that great. It's Aiden O'Connell or bust, basically. And he doesn't have David Bell, which and is George, a big loss. Yeah, and George Karloff just got drafted to Kansas City. Mm-hmm. He looks like he's going to be a stud. He's gone. Mm-hmm. Now they do have his little brother at defensive end, Yanni Karloftis, <laughs> who was a, who was also a four star guy. But I don't expect him to live up to the billing of his brother. Yeah, they have decent enough talent overall to win six or seven games. I expect them to at least win six because Aiden O'Connell is he's also in the run <clears throat> in the running for second best quarterback in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> But there's so much on his shoulders. Who knows? Right. Lastly, Northwestern sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Northwestern really sucks. Hey, they had a top draft pick, though, last year. Yeah. And that's about <clears> it. <throat> He's that's, gone. That's about it. <laughs> they lost their top corner to Notre Dame. He was the real talent. They don't know what they're doing at quarterback. And they didn't have a quarterback that threw over 1,000 yeah. yards last year. Ryan Hilinski wasn't that great. They got a sophomore... Um, he didn't even play last year, but he's they have a guy who's a sophomore that's battling Ryan Helensky for the starting QB job. Yeah. I don't think either of them are great options. Sad part is they actually do have talent in the receiving core mm-hmm. and at running back. Yeah, Cam Porter is actually going to be a really good running back in the Big Ten, but they're just not talented enough. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I don't know if they've lost their touch. They usually were a team that you could depend on for six to eight wins mm-hmm. and to surprise people. Right. But I don't know. I'm I'm just not sure if they just lost it. Pat Fitzgerald, I still believe he's a great coach, but they just haven't been able to get it mm-hmm. over the past few years. They're recruiting really well right now, so maybe they could get back next year. But, yeah, I don't see more than three or four wins yeah. this year for Northwestern. They're yeah. comfort- comfortably last in the Big Twin West. And they get the first game of the season this week, this Saturday. Yeah. Playing Nebraska. Scott Frost, you better win. <laughs> I expect it. Yeah. You're a better team than Northwestern. Yeah. They <sighs> Yeah. They played Nebraska. Then they played Duke. Southern Illinois. Miami. And then you're in the Big Ten schedule and you're gonna lose. So yeah. And that's your yeah, Big Ten the preview. The Big Ten preview almost took me out. <laughs> that's okay. It almost took me out. That's all right. Oh man. Um exciting year. I'm I'm so excited. Yes. Uh so next week we will preview the actual games. We will we'll probably have to preview the Lions a little bit. We should probably talk about a few group of 5 teams next week. Just a few. The yeah. notable ones. Yeah, we'll we'll have to keep an eye out on the games. Uh we'll preview some of the games. We'll have to talk the Lions. We'll talk a little bit about the NFL season uh, because the following week, I will be gone on my honeymoon. Uh, so, yeah. And that's when the NFL season starts. So we'll have to do a little bit of NFL preview. Yeah. We'll talk uh, the college football games that happened this weekend and leading up to next week because um, Michigan State also will play on that Friday night uh, to start their season off against Western Michigan. And, uh, yeah, football is literally here now. Which is exciting. So, yeah. the best time of the year. Yeah. And we can actually just start watching teams and analyzing actual games instead of theory crafting and deciding, oh, I think they'll do this or they'll do this or they'll do this. Yeah. They will do this. They will be this. I'm excited. Well, this has been Views from the Sidelines. That's your Big Ten preview. Next week, like I said, we'll get some, some more hard knocks reviews, NFL, college back into the main swing of things we'll see you guys next time i got an outlier of a of a year last year for michigan so this just might be more disappointment coming up it's what i'm used to who knows i, I just i don't know what to think they better beat michigan state this year.